Another set of photographs to be placed alongside Belzec and alongside Auschwitz and alongside the places of the mass murder in the forest and elsewhere, and that is the ruins of Jewish life. Let's start with that picture. Um, uh, I'm going to give you the place names again because uh, I hear you want to hear them. This is Rimanov, and this is a synagogue of Menachem Mendel of Rimanov, as he's called in Yiddish. And I have to say that... Uh, this um, synagogue has been restored about two years ago, but until then, this is how it looked, 65 years after the Holocaust. Um, the bush is growing out of the roof. Now, for me, I think that that is just as expressive of the Holocaust in its own way as the nothingness of Belzec or the nothingness of Auschwitz. I mean, that is what it looked like inside. What a magnific magnificent piece of architecture, this central tabernacle which marked the Polish synagogue, um, square, uh, the, the synagogue was square, in the center of the synagogue was a square tabernacle from where the Torah would be read. Why it's got this central tabernacle is to give prominence and honor to the Torah which is being read uh, to the congregation. And um, around the walls are texts and inscriptions. Menachem Mendel, I just have to tell you, a great Hasidish rabbi um, who said that there is no limit to the number of good deeds a human being can do in his or her lifetime. And just as much as there's no limit to the number of good deeds that to make the world a better place, so too there is no limit to the good words that a person can say. And it felt very important that each word of every prayer is particularly important, said Menachem Mendel of Rimanov, and his synagogue is full of these words. Um, that was his contribution to Hasidism, one of his most famous contributions uh, to Hasidism. Um, look at this synagogue here. It's, um, uh, as you can see, you can't get in. There's a fence around it. It's scaffolded in. Bits have fallen off. It's a major, um, a major synagogue um, in a town called Dombrova Tarnowska. And this, which is at the entrance to that synagogue, is a particularly tragic uh, site. Here you can see the scaffolding preventing people getting inside. They've sort of scaffolded it up because they don't want it to fall down. Maybe one day they'll get it restored and there are currently plans to do just that, um, even now, again, so long after the Holocaust. But what is powerful is that inscription over the arched entry to the synagogue. Samachti be'omerim li bet Adonai nelech. It's a quotation from the book of Psalms. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. Wow. And you can see that um, pathos there. I rejoiced when they said to me, let's go to the house of God, and now look at it. I think I should just add in parentheses, yes, we all know that there are abandoned synagogues in Lower East Side in New York and, and possibly all over Los Angeles where the Jews of the first generation got here and they uh, moved in, out to the suburbs. But they moved in a very organic, civil, peaceful context. Um, it was not that they were suddenly deported from their homes uh, and taken away to be murdered. And this is this context here. You can't really compare these two types of situation, even though at one level they may have a lot in common. But these are ruined synagogues which express the Holocaust, the great tragedy which overtook these people. This is in the town of Cheshanov. Um, it's bricked up. Um, looking very forlorn and derelict. Um, here you can see um, drunks, drug addicts, using the place to write their graffiti and hang out there, um, an abandoned synagogue. There must have been many, many synagogues all over Poland that suffered that kind of fate. Um, and this is um, a synagogue for the, um, um, founded by a gentleman called Mordechai Tigner uh, just before the First World War who um, created a little house of prayer just 100 yards or so from the main square uh, of uh, Krakow. Um, it's hidden inside a, um, inside a courtyard. It's not easily accessible now, but there it is. Look, very nice metal gates, um, nice Hebrew inscription, nothing to see inside anymore, but it's certainly a good example of a ruined synagogue. And just for the benefit of the photographer, somebody left a toilet pan um, just outside there to indicate definitely this is a ruin, a ruin and not an actually in use. We move to the cemeteries, the broken stumps. I mean, Chris took these pictures sometimes a little bit too romantically for my taste. They're very beautiful photographs, very expressive, very engaging. Um, but um, uh, 
Um, very striking. Um, some of you may have heard of Zakopane, which is a ski resort in the south of Poland. Um, Zakopane uh, had a small Jewish community, um, uh, not a very well long established Jewish community, but there, were, there, there is um, a Jewish cemetery outside the place in the mountains, a skiing resort, um, proving that the Jews actually did live in the Zakopane. There's no synagogue left, but the cemetery proves that they lived there. Um, look at this horrific site of uh, smashed tombstones. I, I think these types of photographs are very expressive of the Holocaust, uh, no question about it. This um, picture of the mezuzah trace, when the text is gone, but the hole in the door frame where the mezuzah once was is often still to be seen to this day. Of course, the owner of that house today can renovate uh, um, his uh, door frame, and uh, in fact, that particular door frame you can't see anymore. That's in Tarnow from Zakotna Street, but um, you, so that particular mezuzah trace is gone, and slowly, slowly they're disappearing now. Um, broken tombstones. The Polish um, <coughs> continued the work of the Germans. Uh, if there were any tombstones left after the war, uh, in local cemeteries, it was they were very often stolen by local bull poles. I don't think one can say that they have to have been anti-Semitic because they took tombstones. The Jews had gone, they didn't appear to be coming back. Nobody seemed to care about their cemeteries. They were devastated, often the fences had been demolished. The people regarded them as valuable building materials and so this fellow took the hero tombstone, smashed it in half and laid it on the entry door to his home and was quite proud to show it to the photographer. But I must say, to give you the other half of the story, that he said he was ashamed of what his father-in-law had done and wanted to return it to the Jewish cemetery now because that is where it belonged and asked the photographer for help in identifying a suitable cemetery, Jewish cemetery nearby where he could return it to. And I just should add that I, my family restored a, a Jewish cemetery um, uh, and um, we just put a fence up around a completely empty lot which had no one tombstone and not one, no fence around it. And once the, we put the, the fence up, the people came back with the tombstones, stone after stone after stone. We announced that the reconsecration would be in the middle of June. The fence was finished at the end of March, and throughout April and May, people were just coming back with tombstones. Once they saw that we were taking it seriously, they took the cemetery seriously. Uh, and it was an amazing sight to see when we had the reconsecration ceremony. Uh, I had the bishop on one side and the mayor on the other side, and, uh, and, and, and um, I made a speech thanking the people for remembering the, the dead, remembering the past, just like God does. God remembers every human being who ever lived. I said, you in this village have done your part for God's work by remembering the dead Jews of your village. It was very emotional and very moving. And that is also what is happening nowadays, um, very strikingly so. Um, here you can see just a trace of a simple banal inscription just saying milk bar and sandwiches. The left-hand side it's in Polish, the right-hand side it's in Yiddish. And j just the last photograph of this section are uh, indeed the Jewish cemetery of the small town of Bzostek, um, not far from Tarnow. The area in green um, the different shade of green is the Jewish cemetery, or was the Jewish cemetery, and still is the Jewish cemetery. Uh, everybody knows it was the Jewish cemetery. They didn't farm the Jewish cemetery. They, it, the, the farmer didn't touch that ground. They cut the grass for hay, perhaps, but that was it. And that was the cemetery which my family restored. Uh, and we put a fence up all around it, and we stood there and thanked the people for There's now 50 tombstones standing upright. There's a fence around it. There's a nice Hebrew inscription over the entry gate things are changing in present-day Poland.